Thank, thank you, CJ. Um, you only have two questions. Yes, madam. And as a judicial officer, you are normally exposed to stressors and you know emotions. How do you regulate your emotions? Uh, thank you, Madam Professor Commissioner. Uh, I'm an avid reader. I love to read the uh, fiction and uh, books. So when I get a good book, I'll escape into another world of uh, reading. Uh, also take time out. So praise and worship uh, is also good for my soul. So I also do that. What about in a, in a courtroom situation? When in a courtroom situation, stressful situations. Yes, uh, that happens. And uh, when you're sitting up here as a magistrate or the judicial officer, you as an officer, you have to be the bigger person and try to manage the courtroom and manage the tensions. So you cannot get into the get caught up with answering uh, back and forth with the with the with the litigants before you. If things get to a head, perhaps take an adjournment, take a five minute break for mm -hmm. tempest to cool down, mm -hmm. then come back and resume. Have you found? Have you done that in your in the course of your duty? Have you and Jan because of what's going on in the court? Yes, I have. Mm. Uh, recently, there was uh, an advocate who came with uh, a whole team of uh, press to, to, s to submit. I had already questioned him. First of all, he didn't have the right of audience. He was not properly before me. Uh, he had taken over a, met a matter after judgment had been entered. And in trying to convince me, he called the press and I indulged him because I knew he was baiting me so once you know you are being baited you just stay cool and you give him let him talk himself out mm. yes if I'm to bring the question closer home when interpreting the law how do you perceive the law to be is it a living document is it as written or the intent of the drafters uh, thank you commissioner uh, my view is that law is an instrument to be used by man law is written for man and it is uh, it is dynamic it's definition it's uh, d d defining it and uh, understanding it depends on the circumstances at any one given time in the community. Mm -hmm. So it is there to serve us. Okay, what uh, provision of the Constitution will then guide the discussion that you have provided? Article 1. Uh -huh. The law is uh, for the people, the will of the people, aspirations of the Kenyans. Okay, yes. and also look at uh, Article 259 3. Mm. And uh, the just looking at the sample writing you have shared and I would agree that you write very well thank you uh, but there is this question that judge Wasame asked whether cohabitation is a marriage and your response was no in this decision if you allow me to speak uh, if to, to, to quote it sorry uh, your decision reads as such further such marriage in brackets that's cohabitation is recognized by statute and the court holds and find there was a marriage what does this say about the issue of decisional independence on one hand you have mentioned it is not marriage but you're the one who is you have reviewed the evidence and come up to a conclusion that there is there marriage. Was a marriage. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, in that particular case, yes, uh, it was cohabitation coupled with uh, an affidavit sworn by both uh, the late lady and her husband. However, the Marriage Act specifically does not say and recognize come we stay as a form of marriage. But uh, 
my understanding, having looked at the evidence that was before me, I really felt that the two parties stayed as husband and wife. And the reason why I'm asking the issue of decisional independence is yes. uh, the concerns of lawyers and also other court users is mm. that at times judges, judicial officers cover themselves with the title decisional independence to come up with not very good decisions. And uh, I will also not blame you so much on this because uh, the High Court and the Court of, of, of Appeal, uh, they are yet to settle the issue of... Uh, Cohabitation. Thank you. Thank yes. You, uh, my last question is uh, around structural interdicts. Mm. Do you know what it is, and are you aware of any decision of a superior superior court? Structural interdicts. Interdict, yes. I'm not familiar with that. Perhaps. Okay. I'm not familiar with uh, structural interdicts. Okay. So then I'll kindly request that you go and we look read at about it. it. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank and you. all the best. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Gishoy. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be very brief. So, Honorable. And, uh, one, in a letter written July 2019, you are commanded to be a person of very high integrity. Person who is committed, that was your supervisor in May, July 2019. My interest would be could you share with us the strategies you have applied to ensure that that value of integrity that you are committed for, you are able to cascade that to the officers in your station? Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, integrity is very critical for the judiciary. And uh, wherever I work and the people I work with, I always make sure that this, the message of uh, having high integrity standard is, uh, is always preached. And I, will, I do not hesitate uh, to take action on people who do not comply. I'm looking for a framework. A framework. Yes. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. The first thing uh, is to have uh, corruption mapping so that you're able to know areas that are prone or might be subject to, 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 to corrupt activities. Mm -hmm. So corruption mapping is one of them. Yes. Uh, right. feedback, uh, from feedback. Our yeah, feedback from our stakeholders, particularly in CUC, where they can point out what's happening. Very good. And uh, sometimes you get it from the media. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a full uh, documentary one time on KTN blasting uh, Busia Lockouts. And uh, my, 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 what I did was to meet the, the person who sponsored that uh, documentary to have a one-on-one -on -one and find out where and what, <coughs> why they were saying what they were saying. Okay. And Under uh, the Constitution, we yes. have this principle of diversity. Yes. I am conscious that you work in Busia because Bonitan County. Yes. What is your understanding, interpretation of that principle of diversity within the context of Busia County or your station in Busia? Yes. Uh, uh, diversity refers to uh, uh, different communities, different people from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, the whole mix of people from uh, the communities, uh, from any any of the Kenyan communities in Kenya, they are all a melt, uh, in a melting pot in Busia. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with them, do not be affected by who they are. You deal with them as an individual. How do you promote that diversity principle in Busia, in your station? How? Question how? Um, uh, div uh, diversity, sometimes you'll find that there are people who are le more marginalized than the others. Good. With uh, less access to resources, mm -hmm. and uh, they may not even be f familiar with the court processes or what is happening in court, or even making payments for some of the things. So you try and explain and tell them in a 
in a way that they understand right. how to... Would you regard the county government of Busia as a key stakeholder for your station? Yes, it is, Commissioner. Yes. Yes. In your early answer, you talked about people living with disabilities. Yes. A very key people in our society. Yes. When they appear before your court, mm. you say that you try to carry them all over. What will be the role of the county government of Busia? If it's a partner in your court, what do you do as the head of station? Uh, we should be having a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. But uh, regrettably, they have been uh, unwilling participants. They, they are not very vibrant uh, in, our, in our CUCs. So what did you do last, last time and engage them? I was wearing in the new governor. Mm -hmm. I was in the assumption com of office committee of the governor. And... Uh, when we have our CUCs, we invite them and... You do raise that issue? How they can assist you? Maybe yes, yes, we have. We yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, the usual cry of not enough resources and uh, we shall look into it. Mm. So we stay hopeful. Okay. Madam Chair, my last question is, that I, I see from your CV here, you are chief magistrate, Yes, accounting madam. officer, mm. chairperson of the county court users committee, yes. chair of the corruption prevention committee. Yes. My interest is your accounting officer. Yes, ma'am. What are your responsibilities, accounting officer, to this commission through the chief the registrar? Chief registrar. Two responsibilities to this commission. Yes, uh, my first responsibility is first and foremost to ensure that the resources that we get are applied for the purpose for which they are allocated. Good. Another one? And another one is to ensure that uh, we are compliant with the budget and the work plans that we prepare and that the monies are used in a transparent and effective manner. Very good. There has to be transparency. We would expect to get two reports from you. One is audited report and financial report. According to the to the law. How often are you supposed to make those reports available to this commission? How often are you supposed to make those reports to this commission through the chief registrar? We make monthly reports on, on revenue, uh, income, and uh, all the collections that we do in the court. And uh, of course, there are also the other quarterly reports for every expenditure that we do in that particular quarter when we get the IE. Okay. And then at the end of the year, uh, in uh, uh, 30th June, then we make the comprehensive reports. So the quarterly report for this financial year is available to this commission? I can get it from the chief registrar for Busia? Yes, it, will, it would go to the director of uh, finance mm -hmm. and I believe it trickles down to the commission. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Professor Mugenda.